There's a lot to consider when starting a business, but the relationship with your co-founders is probably one of the most critical parts. I learned about early vesting and salaries the hard way. On the company I started in 2012, we did have a good vesting agreement in place, but failing to define salaries spiraled pretty badly. I ended up with about $16,000 in credit card debt, which may or may not sound like a lot to you depending on where you live, but 23-year-old me living in Costa Rica where the salary I could aspire to was $12,000 a year. Yeah, it looked like I was going to spend the rest of my 20s paying that back. So today, we are going to look into founder agreements when starting a business. Now, let's start with stock and vesting. Once again, if you don't understand how stock works, you should check out this video. Let's look at a simple and common scenario. Founder A comes up with a business idea for a tech startup. He has a business background and is a great hustler, but can't code. He seeks out Founder B, who has a tech background and has the experience to become the company's CTO moving forward. Now, by tech company, I mean an app, a SaaS, software as a service, a hardware product. But for example, an online store is not necessarily a tech company. If you're Founder A and you're starting an e-commerce platform, Learn to use Shopify or Squarespace and build it yourself, at least until you can start generating some revenue. Back to the original case, the actual full-on tech company. How many shares should founder A get versus founder B? There's probably a lot of debate here, but I'm gonna say, in this situation, this should be a 50-50 split. While founder A has the idea, he can't execute it without founder B. The idea and the business are really worthless without Founder B. And being this a tech company, the product is just as important as the marketing, the sales, the fundraising, and so on. This 50-50 split may be rebalanced, for example, if the business has some traction before Founder B comes in. And don't count talking to customers as traction. I'm talking actual revenue or sales or rounds of funding, users at least. The traction is worth something. So founder A should be compensated for reaching that traction before founder B came in. The essence of the story is that when you have two or three founders, the original company split should be equal, unless there is an additional value already provided by one of the founders in the form of money or traction. Let's say that founder A and founder B agree on this 50-50 split, and six months later, founder B leaves. That would suck for founder A, who has now a missing in action partner who still owns 50% of the company. This is what vesting is for. Founder vesting is an agreement in the way stock is issued, while the founders are entirely dedicated to the business. And we'll get back to the meaning of that in a second. A standard agreement is a 12 month cliff and a four year vesting period. This means that we'll take the stock of each founder, say 500,000 shares, and split them into 48 months. That's about 10,416 shares per month and some. For the first 12 months of working for the company, this stock will not vest. This is the cliff. This means that if the person leaves, he won't take any stock in the company. This is a protection to the remaining co-founders in case that person leaves very early in the company's story. On the 12th month, at the stroke of midnight, the vested shares for those 12 months will be executed, which means that that founder will now own 125,000 shares of stock in the company, one fourth of his stake. The remaining shares will continue to vest monthly thereafter. In case of that person leaving, the remaining founders are still protected and have additional stock for recruiting a new team member. And the person who is quitting is compensated for his work at a critical stage in the company. Now, if you have a US business, it's really, really, really important that you file an 83B election if you are receiving vested stock. I can't stress this enough. If you forget and your business grows or gets funded, you might end up with thousands of dollars in taxes. You can find a free template for this 83B election on Founder Hub. So we've established vesting. An additional challenge here is many businesses don't start with funding or money in the bank. So the founders still have day jobs or side projects to pay for their bills. How do you establish then what fully dedicated to the business means for the vesting agreement. Well, it's tough. I laid out my example and I hope that it provides some guidance to you. Once again, similar conditions are easier and ideal. If both founders have day jobs, then they can agree on a certain number of hours per day. The problem is if one of the founders has a day job and the other one doesn't, or if one of the founders has a family to support and the other one lives with his parents, or in a city where the cost of living is a lot lower. This is where salary agreements are very useful. This is what I didn't do the first time, but learned a hard lesson and solved it 
for my second company, Slidebean. When we started Slidebean, we agreed that each founder would have a thousand dollars salary. While our living situations and monthly expenses were different, we decided that was enough to live in San Jose. The priority for the company was obviously taxes, legal fees, and other company expenses. But as long as the company had money after those important necessary primary payments, everybody would get their full paycheck. If there weren't enough money, we'd get equal paychecks with whatever funds were left, and the company would owe us that salary. We self-funded the company for almost a year, mostly through small consulting projects. We agreed that those were company projects, not individual projects. So even though the project only involved one or two of us, the money we made from that would be the company's money and not that individual's. This worked rather well for us. Only a couple times we had to delay our payments and we agreed that this was each one's responsibility to survive until the next paycheck came in. Defining a limit here is also useful, maybe three or six months after which the founders are allowed to take on day jobs without being considered leaving the company for vesting purposes. Defining that salary and where it stands in the company's cash flow priorities is critical. It's setting the rules of the game. It's not pretty when companies run out of money and there isn't enough cash to pay for stuff. That's a terrible time to try to agree on things. You should decide on things when everything is moving forward on goodwill and put it in writing. It doesn't have to be a lawyer approved legal document. Simply draft these rules in a document, print it, sign it, and stand with your word. Some other tips here. Come up with salaries you can realistically afford as a company. If you live in different cities, you might agree on salary adjustments for living costs. If one of the founders has savings or money flexibility and the other one doesn't, the solution is not to cut his paycheck, but to use that money as an investment in the company. For example, let's say that founder A and founder B both live in the same city, but one of them has savings and the other one doesn't. A solution here would be for founder B to collect a salary and founder A to not get a salary because he doesn't need it because he had the savings. I think that that will just create a mess afterward. Founder B has been receiving a salary and founder A will be eating up his savings. So a good approach here would be for founder A to invest $10,000 in the company and get a fair stock compensation in exchange for that. They both get equal salaries since they both live in the same city. This is my point when I say founder relationships are like marriage. You need to be open about this stuff and be prepared for new circumstances as the business progresses. I became a dad six months into starting the business, which could have been a mess unless there were agreements that had been in place before that. Let me know what you think of these ideas. If you're open to sharing, leave a comment below with the logic on how you distributed founder shares so that others can learn from your example. A lot of you have come to us with amazing comments on the content we generate, and we're super glad that it's useful. Each one of these videos takes about two weeks of work to make, and it costs around $1,000. And we're making a whole video about that in the next few weeks. If you like the content, share it, and of course, give our AI presentation platform a try. You can prepare business proposals or start working on your pitch deck. The exercise of making a pitch deck can give you a notion of what you should be focusing on as a founder. Creating an account is free and you can't beat free. See you next week.